only I could just use my power to seal Inomi not. Looks like you're raring to go, eh, Lafayette? Just don't be too eager to help, okay? You've got a bad habit of trying to play the good guy. Oh no, I'm not a good guy. I'm a selfish, wicked little boy. Oh, is that so? But if you acknowledge your own selfishness, then it's something you've chosen for yourself, right? Yeah. Then we have that in common. Now, all that's left is creed. Only that. Besides, I'm a demon. Even if you were the worst of the worst, I'd be like, cool. Thanks, Aizen. Thanks, Rokuro. <sighs> Velvet. Don't give up on Lafayette set just yet, okay? So, you were eavesdropping on us at the inn. Heavens! I never knew a Praetor to be so utterly shameless! Uh, all right, I was. But that's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is... I know. No matter how selfish you are, life's empty without anyone to share it with. Correct. She's got a point. More than anything, I don't want to give up. Not on myself. The sky... The snow... It's all red. So early at night. Pretty strange, isn't it? It's amazing. Ah, <sighs> uh, it's not like I'm happy about it or anything. If you're worried about Lafi or... you don't need to be. I was just wondering what makes the moon turn so red. They say the Crimson Moon is a gate to beyond, and is proof of humanity's sins. A sign of sin, huh? Maybe the moon drinks up the innocent blood spilled by the wicked. My, it would take a wicked mind indeed to come up with something like that! Please, don't say such frightening things! A scarlet night occurs whenever a full moon is in a certain position. The land and the moon pull at each other, and Earth Pulse energy spills into the sky, turning it red. Yes, and the amount of power is said to create enough mana to affect even an Empyrean. So that's why the ritual is done on a scarlet night. But the world of humanity is violent, and the Earth Pulse is stained with all the blood spilled throughout history. So Rokuro's theory might have hit a little closer to the truth than expected. <laughs> oh, a wild guess hits the mark. Don't get used to it. It sure does look grim, though. Yeah. All right, Velvet. I think it's time you let us in on your plan for how we escape if and when the volcano erupts. There is no plan. Oh, what? And even if we awaken the Elemental Empyreans, we're still toast! I'm not going to die. Well, I'm super happy for you, but what about the rest of us? I'm sure you'll all make it. Don't you think you're being a bit blithe? I doubt there'll be an eruption at all. We'll only be using the volcano's life spring to push souls into the Earth Pulse. I don't think that should have much of an impact on the volcano's activity itself. Well, if you say so, that's a load off. Aye. But the Ancients also say that when the four Empyreans awaken, there's a great shift in the Earth. If they're angry about being roused from their slumber, I don't think a volcanic eruption is something we can rule out. See? What did I tell you? Really? I'm sure we'll be fine. If the volcano erupts, we'll just deal with it. <laughs> You're starting to sound like Velvet. <laughs> you look sure of yourself, but I'm still nervous. It may be best to write up a will. Aizen, do you have a pen and paper? Yeah, but I'm using them. <sighs> That's enough. You already know how this will turn out, right? Oh, so you figured that out. It wasn't hard. Besides, it's not like you have anyone to give a will to. Oof, way to cut to the quick. You'll be facing Shigure soon. Yeah, not long now. I know this is a weird time to bring this up, Lafayette. said. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. All right. Ask away. I knew you'd say that. So, uh, how was your bath and Mercio? Huh? You, uh, you went in with Velvet, right? Just between us guys. What was it like? W what are you getting at, Rogoro? Let me in on this, too. It'll be our secret. Not you, too, Aizen! There's nothing to be ashamed of. 
There are just certain times in life when you need to find your resolve and seize the opportunity. We just want to know what your resolve got you. Right. It's like a test. Stop it! I didn't go into the bath with her! Now that's a shame. That might have been your one shot. Once you're all grown up, you won't be able to get away with it. That's why I didn't do it. I'm tired of Velvet treating me like a little kid. <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> you passed the test. Right. You don't need me to watch over you anymore. Why did you laugh like that? We're just happy that you're growing up. I don't understand you two. If you're just gonna pick on me, go away. <laughs> We're sorry, but I really needed that. Laughter's good for the soul. Rokuro, were you feeling tense? You wouldn't think it, huh? But now I can fight like I always do. I owe you, Luffy said. Yeah, don't worry about it. Looks like the next test is yours. Yeah. Luffy said, Aizen, watch me prove myself. <sighs> What's the matter? Why are you crying? I'm not crying. Okay. <laughs> okay? Is that all you have to say? What's wrong? You really are crying. You and Shigure, your brothers, but... Oh, that. It's really nothing to shed tears over. How can you pretend it's not important? Don't tell me it's because you're a demon. You went and answered your own question. <laughs> so you will say it's because you're a demon? No, that's not the answer, actually. It's not because I'm a demon. It's because we're swordsmen that I'm not sad. Huh? When we fought. When we both really fought. I got this sharp, vivid feeling that pierced straight to my core. When we were both throwing ourselves wholly into the battle, we wanted to keep on fighting forever, like an unquenchable thirst. That's a feeling we only got from each other. Lord Shigure did seem to be enjoying himself. I feel like I can understand it a little better now. <laughs> but I'll never comprehend it. That's for the better. If you did, you'd end up like us. <laughs> Probably so. I wonder when I'll be able to have a match like that again. You won't have to worry about that. Hmm? Just as you worked so hard to defeat Lord Shigure, and will do the same to defeat you. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Your positivity reminds me of him. Now I'm suddenly craving a cup of Yozakura Anmitsu. Yozakura Anmitsu? Cherry blossom flavored sweet bean paste, black sesame ice cream and fruit. It was Shigure's favorite. Hmm. That's kind of hard to picture, but I'd like to try it. Let's settle then. When this is all over, I'll take you out for some. I look forward to that. Then make sure you come back alive, all right? You too, Rokuro. Yozakura Anmitsu. I won't forget. If you want to leave now, Rokuro, I won't stop you. Don't forget. My purpose here is to repay my debt to you. Rokuro... You said something to him at the end. To Shigure? Yeah. Maybe it's not my place to ask, but... I don't mind. It was just something that happened long ago. The story about Shigure plotting to overthrow our lord. That was a lie. A lie that I spread. But why... I wanted a just cause to strike him down. Storm Howl, Shigure's name, the leadership of the clan. I used to want all of that for myself. Do you regret it? Not at all. Besides, Shigure figured it out a long time ago. But really, I don't know what made me think I had the strength to defeat him back then. He was truly strong. Of course he was. He was the head of the Rangetsu family. The strongest warriors in all the land. Rokuro, does this make you head of the clan now? No. I'm a demon. And more importantly, all I ever wanted was to beat my brother. That's enough for me. Piece of cake, it's a cinch, piece of cinch. It's scorching, it's freezing, it's scorching. What are you muttering about? You told me to chill out when I complained about the heat. Is that still bothering you? 
I heat up quickly and cool down slowly. I'm not bothering anyone, so go on, get lost! That's even more annoying. I mean, come on, if it's both hot and cold, it's not scoresing. It's freezing, clearly. That doesn't sound like me at all. Wait, that's not even my point! My skin feels like a frozen shell, but somehow my insides are boiling! This is miserable! <laughs> it should be one or the other. I can't stand this fence-sitting! Oh? Well, so what about the pineapple and sweet and sour pork? Gross! A sweet omelette? A crime against nature. Chocolate-covered raisins? Whoever thought up dried grapes should be hanged! Well, then, what about peach pie? I don't see what you're getting at! What about yourself? Utterly vile. Doesn't that make you a fence-sitter? That's why I'm having you eat that old man and shove him into the life spring. I hope you learn to like yourself. <sighs> don't try to embarrass me. We just need one last soul to awaken the elemental Empyreans. Are you alright, Velvet? I'll eat Melchior, and our collection will be complete. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you. You collapsed after the thing with Teresa and Oscar, remember? Ah, <sighs> you wonder if I'm fine after eating Shigure. It's not a problem. But wasn't Shigure a lot more powerful than they were? But look at me. I'm fine, right? Does it seem like I'm faking it? No. I think I'm just used to it. Both my body and mind. You're not just used to it. You've changed. Mm -hmm. Just as I changed after finding my free will, you've gotten stronger through our travels, too. You faced down many sorrows and hardships and overcame them all. Did I, though? You did. And that's why I... Ah! I'll make you a quiche later. Make pudding, too? Sure. But are you just trying to butter me up so I'll cook for you? Well, I mean... Uh, yeah. How did you know? You really have grown a lot, haven't you? All right. Let's go and find me some Melchior to eat. Yeah! I'm not sure what Melchior is really capable of. What kind of man is he? To put it short, he's the exorcist's shadow. Their shadow? They're supposed to be free of malevolence, but they're only human, and so are those who they want to save. But sincerity and conviction alone won't save the world. To remain free of malevolence, they need someone to do their dirty work. A shadow. I see. And that's Melchior's job. During all my time at the Abbey, I was never aware of what he doing. So, why hasn't he succumbed to malevolence? Because his belief in the exorcists as the saviors of the world is pure and unyielding. It is a mountain of ice that will neither boil, nor melt, nor break. I know the depths of his frozen heart all too well. Uh, wait, does that mean you? Yes. Melchior was raising me to be the next leader of the exorcists. Artorius himself. But that was a terrible mistake. I was unable to live up to his expectations. So if things had gone as he planned, we'd be fighting you instead of Melchior. I'm glad that didn't have to happen. True. If Mogulu was running the Abbey... They would be completely unpredictable. That would be fearsome. Maybe. But doesn't that sound like a whole lot of fun? So Melchior was my shadow too. How pathetic to fight him. I wouldn't say that. There's nothing to be sad about. Removing shadows is part of a shadow's job. Even if I'm a failed shadow, I'm still a witch, and I cast a deeper darkness. Is victory for us really possible? We're facing the Legate, Lord Melchior. I'd give us around four to one against. Four to one? Are our chances that slim? Almost every trick I or any current exorcist knows can be traced back to him. If I throw out three arts at once, he'll pull six out of his hat. He knows our capabilities, and he's got far more power. Four to one might be generous. I suppose you're right. However, we have Velvet, the boy, and Rokuro. Who knows what value they'll add when they run amok? It's impossible to calculate, but if luck goes our way, our chances will rise considerably. Right. We are challenging the hardest possible foe. But I'm only talking about a straight-up fight. Knowing Melky or he'll have some nasty tricks. No matter how you analyze it, the outlook is grim. Aizen, 
You too? What's wrong with a level-headed look at things? Careful consideration could give us the tool we need to turn the odds in our favor. After all, Magilu, forewarned is forearmed, right? Yes, that's true. Even still, we won't find a weakness in him. Let's take another hard look. What we need might be lying right at our feet. At our feet, eh? I'll keep my eyes on the ground as we walk, then. You saved us, Mogulu. Thanks. If you hadn't thrown Melchior off balance, we'd all be dead. I settled my own affairs. Nothing more. But if you want to thank me, I accept gifts. I take it back. He couldn't hurt those flowers. Was that his oath? No. That old fool loved flowers more than anything else. Far more than he did any living human. That's all there was to it. I suppose even a legate could never fully control his heart. Same goes for a witch. Sometimes living can be the hardest affliction. Had the four elemental Empyreans awakened? Who knows? But anything that would sleep through that isn't worth our time. Better watch your mouth or they'll smite you. I can feel a shift in Inominat's domain. Yeah. All four of them have awoken. Inominat has been pushed out from the Earth pulses. Humanity's amplified resonances will diminish, and many Malachim will regain their free will. The Exorcists will likely lose a good chunk of their forces. Eleanor, have you lost your ability to fight too? Sorry to disappoint, but I can still see you. Evil demons, Malachim, and witches alike. You know where he is. I can feel him. His body has left the Earth pulses. He's somewhere above the Empyrean's throne now. Arturius is with him. However, Inominat is pushing back against the other Empyreans with incredible force. If the four are defeated, we'll lose our last chance. No time to waste. Let's go. It's time to end this. Yeah! Take a look at this. Scout ship! The mountain doesn't appear to be erupting. Or doing anything else, really. I'd say that's a relief. Were Melchior's claims only a bluff? I'm not convinced. Most of his threats had as much truth in them as he could muster. With the four Empyreans revived, the land is awakened. Changes in the Earth that once took eons will now happen in a few hundred years. A few hundred years? The mountain will erupt, but not for a long while. A long while to a human, maybe. But compared to the history of the land, it'll be a blink of an eye. But Inominat is the Empyrean of suppression. Who can say what will happen when we kill him? <gasps> well, it's not like I care anyway. I think we should care. Melchior sure was strong, wasn't he? Yeah. If it weren't for Mogilu's help, we wouldn't have stood a chance. But you saw the opening she gave us and took it. Did you want to be the one to finish him off? If it mattered to me, I'd have fought him alone. We all had our reasons to fight him. The opportunity just happened to be yours. That's all there is to it. I understand. If Melchior had only manipulated Eifried for personal reasons, then that would be settled now. But he was acting based on his idea of reason. That creating a world without malevolence was worth the cost of destroying people's free will. Eifried won't be avenged until I destroy that very philosophy. Your business with the Abbey isn't done. Not even close. You all could just sit around twiddling your thumbs, and I'd still take the heads of Artorius and Inominat on my own. If you want to be the ones to finish them off, you'll have to beat me to it. Huh. <laughs> You're on. I'll fight with everything I've got. That's all I can do. That's plenty. I really don't mean to pry, but I've got to know. Does it feel good to pinch all those souls out from your stomach? That's kind of a gross way of putting it. I have to agree with Velvet. The way you put it sounds so... inappropriate. I'm pretty sure that was her point. Oh, I'm sorry. Why so cranky? I was only asking to see if you were getting hungry or not. 
Then ask that in the first place. Are you? Hungry, that is. I do feel hungry, now that you mention it. But I don't think it has to do with losing those souls. Then why is it? Maybe my appetite is increasing as Inominat's suppression weakens. Yeah, I'm suddenly feeling hungry myself. My stomach could start growling at any moment. I have been thinking of nothing but delicious things to eat for a while now. I bet Mogilu only brought it up because she's feeling peckish herself. No, no, that's not the reason at all. That settles it then. When we get back to the ship, you can take guard duty while we eat. I'll make a quiche and pudding. I'll cook up some penguin and tomato stew. Ooh, I'd love to try your cooking, Madam Eleanor. Let's get back to the ship. <laughs> Getting all fired up about food, I would never... I would kill for a big bowl of sweet collegian style borscht! Then go find me some peaches. Why peaches? Because you can't have collegian borscht without peach pie for dessert. We've found quite a few geo trees so far. I feel like I've run three marathons back to back. Sorry, Bienfu. That's okay. All this exercise is making me nice and buff. You're right. You don't look any different, but when I touch you, I definitely feel muscles. <laughs> I bet I could even take down Aizen and Rokuro with a single well-placed hit. I'm not so sure. Hey, <laughs> Pianfu, I know we're placing a heavy burden on you with all this geoboard business, and I'm sorry for that. But we really appreciate it. You've been truly helpful. Aw, Madam Eleanor, <laughs> you're too sweet. You're nothing like that mean old Miss Mogilu. How are you coping with your fatigue? I'm kind of not, actually. In fact, I don't think I'll ever recover. Unless you give me a nice massage, Madam Eleanor. I think I can manage that. I didn't think that actually work. I'm quite good at working out those pressure points. I can really grind the butt of my spear in just the right spots and have you feeling refreshed in no time. But I have to warn you, it might hurt a little bit. What? You know what? Never mind. I'm good. Bad. You don't have to push so hard. Okay, that is refreshing, but ow, ow, ow.